So our project was to reimagine Romeo and Juliet in any way possible, and I was like, hey, I can animate, let me see what I can do with that. Now I use Source Filmmaker, which is cool, but it's sort of restricted when it comes to things like models that I can use. Like it's pretty much limited to just like what I can find on the Steam Workshop or other miscellaneous websites. When I started, I had to consider what selection of characters I could put into the narrative of Romeo and Juliet. I got a bucket of chicken. Then I was like, yeah, let's just use the Five Nights at Freddy's characters. Why not? For those of you who don't know, Five Nights at Freddy's, or FNAF as I'll call it, is a point and click horror game where the objective is to survive the night, you know, being pursued by animatronic characters, yeah, blah blah blah, lo 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 lo. Yeah, all that. I chose these characters specifically just because I've animated these guys on several different occasions and I'm, you know, I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty used to using them, so yeah. But then, I had to think, who would each character be? There are a lot of characters in FNAF. Like, a lot. Like, jeez. So I had a big selection of characters to choose from. I'll only be showing my interpretation of these six characters, just because I only literally had a week to do this whole project, so yeah, I had to cut it down a little. First on the list, Bonnie as Romeo. When making these characters, I had to think of costumes for them. Most of the clothing I will be using is a mix of different clothing packs that I found at the workshop, from things like Team Fortress 2, Animal Crossing, and Splatoon, and all that. Though putting these clothes on characters can be a bit... problematic. So I had to end up stripping most of the characters to their endoskeleton. <gasps> and this is what Romeo looks like. It feels a bit weird to see him in normal clothing at first, but over time I've gotten used to it. Now he definitely looks like your token lovesick loser who stares hopefully into sunsets for a living. Next character that we have is Glamrock Chica as Julia. <laughs> With Chica, I needed to get her some form of dress, which was kind of tricky, because there aren't that many dresses on the workshop. But I did manage to find this dress on like a separate website. And here's what she looks like. She didn't come out half bad. In my opinion, it's not my favourite out of all of them, but I still think she looks pretty good. Up next, we have Withered Foxy as Tibble. I don't know, Foxy was just like the first thing to pop into my head when I was considering Tibble. He's just sort of built for it, you know? So, I removed this eye patch, and, but I kept the hook, because like, the hook's cool. And... Yeah man, I'm telling you, he's built for Tibble. Like, the hook just sort of enhances the look for me, which is like the one reason why I kept it. And the hat is inspired by this one pick of Tibble that I saw whilst researching. Next up, we have Freddy Fazbear uh -huh. as Mercutio. For Bakusho, I had the idea to go for a more gangster type personality for him, and I wanted to reflect that in the costume that I would give Freddy, and this is what I ended up coming up with. Yeah man, he looks great. Like, Freddy literally looks like he's part of like the Grove Street gang, and it's amazing, I love it. Then, as Prince Aeschylus, we have Funtime Freddy. I'm a big fan of the Baz Luhrmann interpretation of the prince, so I'm rolling with an idea similar to that. Before we start off, we're not even going to use this model of Freddy. I'm going to use a slightly different version of him. German Freddy is an unofficial model on the workshop, which I'm going to use because it comes with a pre-established costume, and it also replaces the Bon Bon hand puppet with another hand, so yeah. So I slapped on a new colour onto him, gave him a random badge because there wasn't really any police badges, and then topped it off with a cool helmet. The helmet idea was inspired by characters such as like Soldier from TF2 and Corporal Pig from Angry Birds. Yeah. Overall, my version of Aeschylus has a more militarised vibe going on with him. Oh yeah, it's also the colour of a police car. Lastly, for Paris, we have Montgomery Gator. Let's take a look at the super elaborate costume I picked out for him. Yeah, I didn't really end up doing much for him. I didn't really know what to do for him. So yeah, now he's just some sort of like rich chad. Like, emphasis on the chat. Yeah, anyway, moving on. When it came to making the scenes, I wanted to try to make a decent amount of the scenes from the play. But considering I started this project last Thursday, I had to chop it down exclusively to two very short renditions of scenes. So, yeah. Here they are. The first scene is my rendition of the party scene. Hey, want 
a dance? Um. Uh, oh, ooh, yeah. Oh, he, Mount Tree Rabbit Pigeon. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Ow. Yep, that's how they meet now. It's canon, don't look it up. Okay, so I was supposed to also do the scene where Romeo and Juliet die, but unfortunately, I ran out of time to fully complete it. It's a shame too, because it took so long to build the set for it, and this is what it looks like. It would have been a cool scene, but oh well. At least I still have this ending sequence to finish off the presentation. Okay, maybe not that last bit, but, but, you know, you get the picture. Personally, I do kind of want to revisit this idea in the future, you know, do more characters and scenes and all that stuff. Would you guys like to see that? Comment down below if you guys want to see me revisit this idea in the future or something. Oh yeah, also, if you're wondering, I got a full mark for this project, so all things considered, yeah, it was a job well done. Also, fun fact, Juliet's dress is literally from this not safe work model I found. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye!